Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Saturday Night Live. My name is Andrew, and I'll be your host tonight. <laughs> SNL is a ministry of Northridge Church. You are all welcome to experience everything that Northridge has to offer. We meet here on Saturdays, obviously, and Sunday mornings, and even Sunday afternoons if you speak Spanish. If you have kids, ask somebody about the different free programs and activities we offer during the week. Northridge and SNL are proud to partner with Hope for Freedom Society. We are big fans of this ministry and count ourselves fortunate to work alongside them this way. <laughs> Celebrate Recovery is a place to experience freedom from lights, hurts, habits, and hangups. We have a group that meets Friday nights just down the road at Highway Church, and there are literally CR groups all around the world. If you know you're going to be moving out of town and want to know more about how to connect with CR, just let us know. We like to celebrate recovery here at Saturday Night Life. Uh, this is a little bit hard for me because um, I slipped up this week and um, I had to look to God and pray and make it back to the house. Um, I, thank you. You know, addiction is a, a lonely disease. It wants us to be alone. Um, it wants us to sit in that that shame and that fear. And um, and it's something we can't do on our own. We can only do it together. And I need all of my brothers in this room and at the home, and I need all of my friends here at church to help me with that. Um, so today I'm celebrating five days clean and sober. <laughs> And I'd like to ask anybody else who's comfortable sharing where they're at in the recovery to stand and share with me. Congratulations, Jake. Congratulations. Congratulations, Leon. Congratulations, Eric. Twenty-two hundred days. Congratulations. Praise Jesus. Yes, praise Jesus. You can take the Bible with you wherever you go. YouVersion is an app for your phone to act with access to the Bible in dozens of languages and translations. It also has Bible studies and the ability to highlight and share what you're reading. So check it out anytime you have access to your phone. If you don't have access to a hard copy Bible, we have just one for you. Just connect with the leader follow, following the service and we'll make sure you get one. All of our SNL services are streamed live on Facebook. So hi everybody online. Um, during the week, you can watch and replay on YouTube or check out a podcast version on Spotify. After you find us, stay connected by liking, following, subscribing, or whichever option you have so that you never miss a service. We serve coffee because coffee is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but we also serve coffee because we want to encourage you to linger and hang out. So make sure to refill your cup and enjoy a good conversation. While we're talking about coffee, it's a good time to let you know that coffee shop will be closed during service on Sundays. The room gets used for kids' programs, so it's important that we don't interrupt them during this service. Um, and take some time to check out the free clothing available for you tonight. It's been brought especially for you, so don't be shy and take as much as you want. Once again, we're glad you're here. If you got your Bible, you can open, the, open it to the book of Matthew and get ready to learn a little bit more about Jesus, the Son of God. Hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> I, I've, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You guys sound beautiful. That's probably the most musical group we've heard, and I've heard in years. Uh, your, you guys, the, we have, right? Yes. 
We've had groups here who can carry a tune in a bucket before, but uh, you guys are killing it. It sounds, what's that? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jess couldn't play the guitar. I tried playing the bass. I'm, well, I, I play the stereo is all I get now, but yeah, I wish you would. I'm, that's one of my things. Honestly, I want to try, I, my son's up here uh, tomorrow playing the guitar, and I'm so proud of him about it because he just, he's, I don't say he's obsessed because that's a little too much, but he's doing, he, he's really good at it, and he's the guy that I want to be like musically because he's very good. But anyhow, um, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody that, that came up and prayed for me <laughs> last the other week. That was, uh, it meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to me, and, and, and to see, I saw it online, that all you got, men and women, everybody, it was amazing. And Paul, other than my children, one of the mo most touching things I've had in my life. So thank you very much. Um, just an update. There is no update. I'm waiting for a schedule uh, surgery. So, but uh, thank you. It meant a lot to me, and uh, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, on something completely different but funny, I was getting coming out of the shower today, and my son says, "Dad, Dad, come take a look." I don't know if you guys remember that stupid kitten that my son brought home that I, I've been cursing since we got boo kitten. It used the litter. It used the toilet. Yeah, he's like, I come out of the well. That too, because I hate litter boxes. I come running out of the bathroom, and the cat is literally poised in the right position, and doing the right thing. Yeah, right in the water. No, not didn't even make a mess like my boys do on the toilet seat. They, she, she went right there, and I'm like, what? That's what my wife says all the time. You're loud. You're too loud. My old cowboy days don't work. Good, good. I won't run around. Like, uh, we're, you hear me now? Okay. Uh, oh, now i got to worry about this. If I fall, I'm coming for you too. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. We're reading out of the book of Matthew, chapter 4. And um, <laughs> I really like this because this... And, you know, I'm only going to go to, to verse 11, whoever's rolling the, uh, the thing. Uh, Tyler? Oh, Tyler, yeah. Because, I don't know, I got caught up from 1 to 11, and, and, and I think it not only applies to, to us, it applies to everybody, everybody, not just people in recovery. It applies to, uh, it applies to any, anybody with a heartbeat, essentially. So I'm going to read it like I usually do. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit. Oh, and this is a thing. I, I, I missed David's message yesterday because, or, or last, sorry, last week. So uh, this is after, after, after Jesus has been baptized and the Spirit of God. Ha I okay, yeah, thank you. Because I'm going to trip myself. I always trip, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm s oh, there we go. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> so. The Spirit of God was on, ascended on, on Jesus' head like a dove. And, and I want you to pay attention to this. So then, the G, then, then the Jesus, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be, by the, sorry, to be, let's try that again in English. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you're the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The scriptures say, People do not live by the bread alone, but, but, the, but by the very word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, at the highest point, 
of the temple and said, if you're the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order the angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures are also say that you must not test the Lord. Next, the devil took him to, to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said. And if you kneel down and worship me, get out of here. This is the thing that I, I, I want everybody to re remember this when we leave. Get out of here, Satan. Resist him. He has no power over us. Resist him. In the, he who is in us is, has greater power than him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went. Here's the, here's the other part of that. Where did the devil go? The devil went away. And the angels came and took care of Jesus. So I, I uh, I'm sorry, I got that in my eyes still. <laughs> it's probably those tears that you guys make me cry all the time. The, uh, it says, the, I was reading this, why would Jesus, why would Jesus have, uh, he hasn't really started his ministry yet. He's being led away and being tempted. And then I found in, in, in Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 2, 2, 18, since he himself has gone through the suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are, when we are being tested. Jesus was Jesus. He was a sinless man. And through this, in the wilderness, he understood. He, be, he was thrown everything. And, and how, it's like my son, my son was a, Actually, this is a pretty big celebration in my house. My son's now a journeyman. But before he became a journeyman, he was an apprentice. And before he was, to, to learn to be a journeyman, he had no idea. He was taught everything and learnt, learnt everything to become that, the, the journeyman. But how does Jesus sympathize with us without knowing, without having a baseline of, of, of the pain and suffering? And, and he went through it all, and he knew it all. And some of the things that the devil threw at us is, is <laughs> the, the very, like at the very end, this is the part I, I kind of get a kick out of it because it says uh, he took him to the peak of the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Well, like Jesus already built the kingdoms and the glory. Like what is he tempting him with? With the world that he already created, that he's already king over. It, it's, it, it, so in this, uh, from, from 1 to verse, verse uh, 11, the devil is is everywhere, and he's he, five times he's named, and once he's called the he's called the uh, uh, called Satan, and uh, the whole purpose of Satan here is trying to bring Jesus down. And I can and I, I made me think about this too. He says that if you're the son of son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. And I got to tell you, I don't have very many good family memories when I was a kid, but I would come home from school, and my, that fresh smell of bread that my mom would make. She would make like five loaves every couple of weeks, and we'd mow it down. And I remember, I can't imagine 40 days and 40 nights fasting. And it's like, because ah, I'm sure his, he grew up with his mother cooking every day. And the smell of unleavened bread or leavened bread or whatever the heck they had back then, pitas, I don't know. <laughs> right? I don't know. What do you eat in the Middle East? I really don't know. But uh, it's mom's food nonetheless, and that's when you, when you move, move away from home. You miss mom's food all the time. And, and, and the, the other thing I was noticing, too, I, I love being outdoors, and I love being by myself. But I've also, when I was in my, the deepest of my struggles, being alone was the worst place for me to be. Like Adam and Eve. Eve was by herself when she succumbed to the serpent. David was alone in his house. When he's looking over the balcony and he saw Bathsheba and he murdered her husband. Elijah was alone under the tree when he started thinking that he wanted, you know, he wanted to kill himself. He wanted to die. There was many times when I was alone. And, and it, it, <laughs> I, I can remember being hanging out with my friends. And as soon as the door closed, I was alone. And alone, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Alone, you're on the floor, 
and you're just sobbing because you're alone and you have nobody and you feel like you have nobody and you're empty. <coughs> and and, and it, when you're alone, you can feel pity for yourself. You can, and, and sometimes you feel like you've crossed the point of no return when you're alone. And, and there's the part about being alone that I, if, if, if you're not a Christian, if you don't have Jesus, the part, the, the scary part that I, I realized through the study too is that the devil's been studying us. He's been studying. He knew me. He knew me when my dad was saying those horrible things to me. And those things were coming into my head. And when I say my head, the, I, I know our head. The things that have happened to us in the past the things that we did to survive that we can't let go, he knows how to use it against us. He knows when it, what cuts the deepest, what can manipulate us at the core of who we are to the point that where we figure that we're, there's a point of no return. He knows what appeals to us, what sh how to shape our temptations, how to... How to, to, to What's the word I'm looking for? I, I hate, I'm, he knows what the he knows what at the heart of what you worry about and your personality. The thing of it is, you got that picture that I, I, I the picture of you want to throw that up there. So we were uh, this I t I took this picture, and uh, this that's not what the devil looks like. It was in the that's in the Catholic. Uh, 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 church in Florence, and <laughs> I'm going to tell you something because it's kind of funny. But there's the guy's got a hot poker. See that? You can imagine what's going on there. That's hell. Oh, really? <laughs> see, so the devil. Yeah. Anyhow, there's there, he's poking and burning a guy. And my my son, we're walking up this up the church. And you can go into the big. It's called the Il Domo, and it's, it's a huge church in Florence. A big, and you walk up in the dome. And the first thing, my son, my youngest son, because he's always the kid to find these pictures. Dad, look at that. <laughs> and that's literally a hot poker. That you're, that's trying to figure out what that is. And, and, but that's not what the devil looks like. The devil looks like your best friend that's offering you a, a drink. The devil looks like the, is it, can, it could be me when I was a young man chasing after girls. You know what I mean? The devil can be anybody. He does he, who's who's gonna who's gonna bow to that? He's charming. If he was, he he is, he is. Manipul I can never say that word. He man, he can manipulate us, and and he knows well what he what 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 affects us. If he, somebody comes to you and. And, and he's disguised as somebody who cares and that takes you out for a drink or takes you out for a restaurant and, we, or, or you, and you end up having, oh, but you know what, don't worry, it's just one drink tonight. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, it's some cough medicine. You'll be fine. <clears throat> he is called the angel of the light, believe it or not. He is the big deceiver. Verse 3, he tempts, <laughs> he tempts Jesus with hunger. Because Je 40 days, he went straight to the weak point. The first thing he did, the Jesus was without food, was out for 40 days and nights. And he was like, hey, warm bread. You know what that smells like? It smells good. And it tastes good when you put that butter on the top. He didn't say that. I'm just paraphrasing. That's Steve's Bible. I just paraphrased it. I'm sorry. It's not. I, I feel bad. As soon as I said that, it's not Steve's Bible. I really did feel bad. As soon as I said that, that was wrong. <laughs> so so I, uh, there's a quote from uh, Barclay. He says, always, re always remember the person who is gifted with charm will use that charm to get away with anything. The person who's gifted with words will be tempted to use those words to get away with anything. His excuses to justify his own conduct. The fact that temptation is everywhere and that we must be 
on watch at all times as what ha- what is tempting us and who and and dis- and being able to see through the disguise as to who's bringing the temptation the devil he wants our soul too jesus wants our soul to live forever and ever and ever the, oh thank you i was gonna say you can get rid of that picture now the 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 the, the devil does wants wants he wants our marriage he wants our motivation he wants our ambition he wants our dreams he wants any success that you could possibly have that's what the devil wants with the temptations and he will i've been married thank you jesus 33 years this year and and there and 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 thank you and and i love my wife beyond anything that i could possibly think i could ever love and and i i there was times where you're at a party and there's la- people i'm gonna say ladies obviously ladies i don't know why i said people the ladies would come up to me and i'm like that's a pretty lady no doubt about it but the the, the temp the, the, no matter what is the temptation the the, the the, the devil will throw at you to destroy that so you don't make that 33 years. So you don't. And as soon as I told that lady, hey, hey, I'm married. She's like, well, that doesn't really, for now you may not be. I'm like, no, I am married. I am married. Stay away. Like, like Jesus says, get out of here, Satan. Get out of here, Satan. That woman who showed up, who wanted I don't know, you know what I'm getting at. The one who, who wanted to destroy my marriage or just wanted to party, get out of here, Satan. That buddy that comes and goes, hey, you know what? Just, let's just go have a beer. Just go have a beer. Or just one puff isn't going to make a difference. Get out of here, Satan. And, and, and so I just wanted to move on to uh, verse 5. The devil took, took him to the holy city, the highest point. And so I was reading... I was reading that apparently 450 feet tall, the, the highest point of this temple. And, and here's the other thing that, that you need to understand, too, is that the devil also knows this Bible. That's why we need to know this Bible. We need to know what is written and what, we, what Jesus and what the Holy Spirit has written down here in the context as well. Because he says he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up in their hands. In Psalms 91, 11, 12, is because it's, it's, it's what he's quoting from, but he's misquoting from it. He's using it to manipulate and try and tempt, tempt, temptate, nice, temptate, tempt Jesus. And then it, it's, it, he's, I like what Jesus says. You must not test the Lord your God. And I, I had a friend. I had a friend. Actually, I used to, this is a side story. I used to do, I used to rodeo a long time ago, a long time ago, when I had a, was younger. And, and my, the, my, my road buddy, he went off to become a pastor. And when he was a pastor, he started this church. And if people weren't healed, it was because they didn't have enough faith in that church. And they didn't have enough faith and they were constantly testing Jesus. That, 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 and, <clears throat> it, it, and, and this is what the devil's trying to do. And I, I don't agree with that. It, 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 Jesus will do what Jesus wants to do. It's his will, not, not our will. And we don't say, well, if, if you didn't, get, I'll point my finger at me. If you didn't get test, didn't get healed, it's because you didn't have enough faith. Or you, you, you weren't doing the right thing. It's, it says... <laughs> he just tells him, jump, jump. And you, you, you won't even get hurt. It's ridiculous. Verse, and then and you jump ahead to, sorry, my, my Bible just, it's error. I use the hard copy. I love using this hard copy. And it says, verse 8, the next the devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms and of the world and their glory. And this is the part like I said earlier. It's like saying to me, hey, Steve, let's go to your house. These two boys can be yours if you bow to me. He created the world. 
It already is his. It already belongs to him. This is how the devil tries to manipulate things and it, 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 and spins things and justifies things in our head. This will make things, if you do this, if you take this, if you continue to take this, it's not that big of a deal. It, it's going to get rid of your pain. Every time you give in a little, the temptation becomes greater. To understand this completely, Satan is defeated. He is not the winner here. Despite what, what's, what we may feel like sometimes when we're at the lowest of our low, that he is one and we can't, there's no coming back, he is not one. Five days back, he's won. Six, what, how many thousand? 2,200 days. He is winning. 90 days, what was, sorry, I, I'm horrible at remembering things. You were 90 days, how many days? Yeah, there you go. And apparently I'm bad with math, too. <laughs> 121. He's winning. He's not the victor. Understand that if you have any doubts in your mind. Over a year, my pal back there, sorry, I'm pointing, but because I think it's awesome. Young Bobby over here, winning. Young Jeff, winning. I found this poem. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay. It will cost you more than you'll want to pay. If I, want, if I could get you guys to repeat this after me, I want us to be all of us to say it. Sin will take you farther than where you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay. It will cost you more than you ever want to pay. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. And he'll teach you to be a liar. He'll teach you to be a thief. He'll teach you everything that will take, to, to, to dig you deeper so that you stay longer. And this worship team wants to come up and come up. And he'll take you places. Sin will take you places where you never want to be. And I know I can attest to that. And I'm sure the rest of us can too. <clears throat> Before we go, I just wanted to Proverbs 5, 20, foo, 20, foo, nice. I got tongue, 22. I don't know what's going on with me tonight. An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are his ropes that catch and hold him. There's one that will cut those ropes. There's one that will perpetually keep, it, keep us free. If you guys could bow your head for a moment. If there's anybody out there that needs that relationship renewed, needs that relationship made strong and wants prayer, raise your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If this is your, if if you're making a decision to come to Jesus. And you want to speak his name and say, get out of here, Satan. Can you raise your hand? Thank you. Lord Jesus, you saw the hands. I thank you for dying on the cross, for loving us. For when we call on your name, Satan can't live on us, in us. When we call on you, like you said, get out of here, Satan. I just pray for each and every person that would raise their hand that, that, that you are their default, that the Holy Spirit guides each and every person here. And that understanding 
who the devil is and the power. And that when we are tempted, we just say your name, Jesus. We just say Jesus. And he will be a, and he will go. Resist him and he will leave in Jesus' name. I thank you for each and every person here. I thank for every each and every day of sobriety because it is a miracle in your name, Lord Jesus, and an example of who you are. And the example of your grace is loving us, Lord Jesus, and accepting us for who we are and not what we have done and not what we can do. I thank you again, Jesus. In your precious name, amen.